Hi guys, Jurassic Junkie here and I've got some Skittles. So before we start Friday Night Rant, I'd like to apologise for the delay in doing these videos and it comes down to two simple reasons. One is my PC has been terrible, it crashes, I've lost so much work every time I try to edit, it dies. So I've been out this week and purchased a brand new sexy machine which is hanging on the other desk. Number two is Grand Theft Auto. I, oh, we, I'll go into it in a minute. But as always, before we start the show, it is time for a sponsored by a drink and this week it is Jim Bean and Cola. And I'm even going to be a good lad this week and put it in a glass. Also, I have to say, the audio might be a bit crappy this week simply because I haven't got the PC fully set up yet, so I haven't got the microphone, etc. installed. But, to you. That's dumb fine drink. Mmm. So, the first thing I want to talk about this week then is Grand Theft Auto, the game that has completely taken over my life. Now, first of all, it's just gone through and smashed all world records. It's got six Guinness records at the moment. It sold 11.2 million units within the first 24 hours, netting them $815 million. And then three days later, they just chalked it up to the billion dollar marker. I have to say, I have actually poured in a total of 183 hours into Grand Theft Auto already. I've just, I've, I've completed the story, I've 100%ed it, I've gone mad online and buying my part. It's just, oh, it's too good. The game is too good. But there is a little problem, and it is the Grand Theft Auto Online. Now, first of all, I'm kind of split into two parts here. First of all, the game itself, the offline game, is glorious, it's beautiful, it works perfectly, and to be fair, I don't even think I've seen any glitches or bugs in the game, so it's nice to see a polished product for once. And they did say there was going to be delay in Grand Theft Auto Online for two weeks, and then obviously we'll be able to jump back on, and they even did kind of tweaks saying it might be a bit buggy to start off with. But in reality, it was actually awful for the first week, pretty much first three days we couldn't connect and when we did, we was getting kicked out of lobbies, characters was disappearing and it was, it was just an absolute mess. I have to say now it actually feels like the cloud's become a bit more stable and the game's become very enjoyable, online appears to be fixed at last. There's definitely a few little bugs and things there at the moment where the latest update's actually crashing the machine, but still we're getting closer to a perfect game. So the problem is a lot of people's complaining saying you shouldn't have launched this, it's buggy, it's broken and everything. On one hand I'm thinking the game itself is perfect and for them to chuck on the online is just an absolute bonus to me. So if it's broken and then it eventually gets fixed, I'm happy because it's just nice of them to do that in the first place. Now I know some people might be purchasing the game just for the online and fair enough that's annoying. But I don't understand why Rockstar didn't just turn around and just say these very simple words which would have sorted all the problems. Online is in beta until say November or December. Now it means they can just operate exactly how they are now, just rolling out updates to fix little things there. But if they actually called it beta, I think a lot of people wouldn't be as angry. Because if my character had been deleted, yes, it would have been annoying, but I would have been like, at least it's in beta. But because they're just trying to say we're fixing things on the fly, when you do end up losing a character or losing loads of money, it's really annoying. And the other thing that kind of annoyed me is Rockstar was saying, oh, we didn't expect this many people to play in the game. Now, I simply have to call bull on that one. You sold 11.2 million units within the first 24 hours. Now, I've got to say, I would have thought 90% of the people that was getting it on day one are pre-order people. Now, Rockstar must know the amount of people that pre-ordered this actual game. So you've got a rough idea how many people are going to be crashing onto them servers on day one. But at the end of the day, as I said, it appears to be getting better now. But either way, I f***ing love the game. So the next thing I want to talk about is three pieces of good news on the three consoles. Now first off with Nintendo, we've obviously seen Pokemon come out today, Joe's gone mad, she's playing downstairs with the niece. But at the same time, they've actually done the Zelda HD Wind Waker remake. And over in the UK, we've actually seen the Wii U sales skyrocket by 685% due to the actual Zelda remake. <coughs> Which is brilliant, because that means now 42 people in the UK own a Wii U. I'm just kidding! Just a little joke. But no, I think that's absolutely great to see that the sales are actually coming in. And that's what I've been saying a million times before. It's because everyone's waiting for games. Now, obviously, that game might not be for everyone, but it obviously was for a lot of people. And now they've been out to purchase the Wii U. So, Nintendo, just keep getting games on your console, and I'm sure it will do fine. The next piece of good news is with actual Sony. Now, again, with the Sony PlayStation 4, things are a bit quiet. There hasn't been an amazing amount of information been said. But there is that game called Last Guardian. 
Now, I know a lot of people may have forgot about it, and it's one of them ones that's coming soon forever. In fact, it's actually <laughs> as bad as Half-Life 3. But there has been rumours have been saying, yes, they're still working on Last Guardian. And it's not been confirmed if it's coming out for the actual PlayStation 3 or if it might become to PlayStation 4. But the latest has been said is they're going through re-engineering of the game and the team size is now smaller because they are more engineering focused right now. Which practically just says that's coming to the PlayStation 4. The re-engineering it and going through and just kind of doing it all again, it looks like it's just coming for PlayStation 4. So the good news is... Last Guardian isn't dead and it may be coming to the PS4. Practically will be coming to the PS4 or PS5, depends how long it takes. And then the third piece of good news, which actually starts off as bad news and then turned into good news, was the rumour at first that Rise on the Xbox One is actually being downgraded graphically. And as soon as I read that, I was like, no, because it looked absolutely glorious as it was. But there is a hint of truth. It is being downgraded slash upgraded. Now, at the moment, the character models run at 150,000 polygons per character. Now this has been downgraded to 85,000 polygons. So yes, the numbers have dropped. But the reason for this is you're gonna see now a graphical boost elsewhere. Now Cryotech tweeted out simply saying that it was 150K polys with LODs, which stands for level of detail. And now it's changed to 85K polys, but with better shading and no LODs. Now straight away, just that information kind of goes, uh, what? But then when you come to actually look at the photos, you can actually tell the shadowing is a lot better. There's more detail there. So by reducing the amount of polygons in the characters, they've upped the amount of shading. And even if you look at the background, there's a lot more detail in the images. So when I first read it, I was like, oh no. But after reading it and looking at the comparisons, I'm even happier to see that Rise is actually going to be better than was at E3, and at E3 it was mind blowing. So good information all round. So then you might be thinking, wow, you're not really ranting, Jurassic Junkie. You've got to have a piss and moan about something. But don't forget, there's the PC users. So, yes, Steam had its big three announcements. Now, first of all, as soon as I hear the word three, I'm like, Half Life 3 confirmed. And I was absolutely disappointed. No, it's not being done. Now, I know somebody's going to point this out down below, so to just save you any time, that Valve have actually gone around and trademarked Half-Life 3. So, it's kind of... Well, we know the game's coming, and that's one step in the right direction for it getting closer to be done, but still no confirmation as of yet. So, anyway, these three big things that Valve was going to actually announce. And first of all, I have to say, I don't know if I misread the information that was being said, or I'm just a complete idiot. But when you went onto Steam's website, I had a counter going down. And as soon as I see a counter on a website and I know news is going to come out, the first thing I think is live stream. So I kind of come off the Xbox, got the laptop plugged into the TV, sat down with my cup of tea, and just watched the numbers tick down. And nothing happened. And then I F5'd the website to find out it was just an image. I'd been sick waiting for this countdown to just load an image and there was no live feed. Now, that's nothing bad for the company. That's just me assuming that that was the case and being extremely disappointed. But I was then continued to be disappointed by the news. So the first announcement is Steam OS. So at the moment, Steam is just an application that simply sits and runs on top of Windows, on top of iOS, Linux, or whatever flavor you're running. But they've realized that obviously there's so many things that can go wrong in an operating system that if they made their own operating system, they can actually probably get more power out of your actual hardware, which yes, you could do, and it completely makes sense. But to me, it's not an exciting feature because they're saying they're going to bring Steam closer to the living room. Now, for you to have Steam OS running on your computer implies that you have a computer. So if your computer's plugged into your TV already, you're already running Steam. So yes, you can rip off your Windows and now put Steam OS on there, but it doesn't mean they've got closer to the living room. They've not really changed your life. It's just a nice piece of operating system. So that news straight away kind of made me go, I'm disappointed with that. The second piece of news is Steam Machine. So we've all been talking about the, the idea of the Steam Box that was coming. So Steam Machines are coming out now. And my problem with the Steam Machines now, I don't completely understand who they are for. Now, first of all, Steam have actually said that they're going to be coming from different manufacturers. And obviously, you'll be able to pick the one that suits you, which probably implies there's going to be low-end, mid-range, and high-end PCs. Now, these, to me, don't seem like a console, because a console is one unit that has the same specs as the others. And the reason I like console gaming is because that means the games are tailor-made to that spec. So, for instance, if you look at Battlefield 4 graphics and you're going to purchase it on your PlayStation 4, if you're going to play it on your Xbox One, you know it will work because it's been tailor-made to that hardware. Now, the downside to, obviously, PC gaming, and don't get me wrong, PC gaming is great, you've got your mods and everything like that, but the problem is when somebody creates a game and say it's really super-duper hot, sexy, 
sexy graphics, sometimes your machines can't run it because obviously there's so many different flavors of PCs out there, it's impossible to tailor make them for every single one. So that's why I enjoy console because like I said, you know it will run. But with Steam saying we're gonna roll out these Steam machines, it means you could probably buy a low end one and then the next gen graphics come out and it means that it might not run and therefore I don't class it as a console. I just see it as a PC. And a lot of people say, yes, it is just a PC. But the thing is, I don't know who would buy that PC. And I, I've just said at the start of this video, my PC was playing up, so I've been out and purchased a new one. Now, I've built it with several things in mind. One, I want to put graphics cards so I can play games. But two, I need some power in there, so when I'm editing it, I can chuck my information out as fast as possible. And I do multiple things on a PC. Now, I think if somebody is a hardcore gamer, they will probably build their own rig anyway because they want to overclock the hell out of that machine. But at the same time, the casual gamer, I don't see if they would actually go out and buy one of these because they've got consoles that kind of do that already. And the other thing is, these actual Steam boxes are going to come with Steam OS, which obviously is an OS designed to just play games. But the other thing is, obviously the PC is used not just for gaming, so I use my internet browser, which obviously, yes, I know Steam OS is gonna come with some form of internet browser, but I do multiple things. I do my work on the PC. I print stuff off from my PC. I watch movies, films, sometimes might have come from a place that it shouldn't have come from, so therefore it might not be compatible with most standard plays, so I might have to put a codec or something in there to force it to play. So the point is, the PC is great because it's flexible. You can do different things on it whereas Steam are kind of making it's not a console and it's got the beauties of a PC but we're taking the flexibility away and locking it down like a console so they've kind of gone in between and I don't know who that's aimed at <clears throat> so if you are interested in a Steam PC definitely let me know because I'm not saying no one will buy it I'm just saying I don't know who the market is for and then the last thing is they've now said that they're going to bring out a controller <clears throat> now straight away even my PC friends was going what the f is this and I also think what the f is this and I'll hold my hands up I'm interested I want to put it in my hands I want to play with it I want to see how well and responsive the actual controller is but my first idea is with my analog sticks I want my analog sticks back now so then the actual steam controller then has got some form of touch thing on the front and you can press the buttons in it looks like they've obviously got the rumble controller built into both sides so kind of what the xbox one's doing where you can obviously get force feedback from different parts of your hands and your fingertips this appears to be doing a very similar thing and it looks kind of nice i don't like the idea of the buttons being moved up there but then again it's one of them ones i've got to try it really to actually be able to save the two cents but i am actually quite skeptical by taking the analog sticks away now i've got respect for the company and i understand they wouldn't just chuck it out in a whim if they haven't tested it a million times and gone this works better than analogs so I do believe that they believe they've made a better controller. But I don't know. I'd call me old fashioned, but I just like my analog sticks. It works, I love them, and I'm a bit skeptical about this controller. So after the conference, which I expected it to be, and it wasn't, it was just three pieces of information, I was disappointed. We've got a Steam OS, which I don't care about because I've already got Steam. I'm making Steam machines, which are just PCs, locked down and they made a controller which I am skeptical at best at and uh, give it back. So that leaves us with the question of the week which this week comes from Andrew Webster who simply says should Sega make another console? Now first of all the answer to would I want Sega to make another console? Yes I would love Sega to make just Dreamcast 2 sold I will purchase it on day one even if it has zero games but should they make one? I'm gonna have to say no. I'd love them to do it. I just think it's too much of a dangerous market for Sega to jump in now and release a piece of hardware. Mainly because obviously Sony and Microsoft have got so many third party support that obviously between their own games and the third party games, they thrive. Same with the 3DS, great third party support. But then we've seen the Wii U has got very, very poor third party support and it's actually doing really poor sales now granted fair enough as I said Zelda's come out stocks have jumped up a little bit but as we can see Nintendo tends to rely on its own rehashes and remakes and HD versions of its old classics and I would be worried that if Sega came out it kind of would do a Nintendo and go look at all these games again and fair enough they could come out and go here's Shenmue 3 which would be great and everyone would jump on and that would be a reason to buy a console in itself but after that I think they'll be doing let's do a crazy taxi and let's do this and it would just be worrying that they kind of would just jump on the old stuff 
So I have to say, I want to see them do it, but I don't think they should. So the question goes to you anyway, should Sega make another console? And last thing I want to say just before I go, I'm going to do a shameless plug for our other channel, Try Before We Die, which this week consists of me and Grant going indoor skydiving, or as we like to call it, getting blown in Milton Keynes. So that's me done and dusted guys, and I'm not going to lie, I'm going to go and play Grand Theft Auto all night. Hope you guys have a great weekend, and thank you very much for watching. Cheers guys, bye.